So in this video, we're looking at uh, band beams, or um, I suppose you can call them internal slab beams or whatever. Um, what I've got in front of me is a is a model of three typical beams, a, a slab sitting on columns. And if I go transparent, we can see I've taken again the liberty of just adding some reinforcement to the columns for context. If we go back to um, the full 3D render mood. What I've got here is a scenario where I've modeled up this from scratch, but I've used a typical scenario that when we import um, elements from IFC in particular, it can come in any form and size. So in this case, we've got a beam modeled all the way to the top of the slab. So if I click on that beam, I can see it's an 850 deep by 1,200, uh, 1,500 wide. And we've got a slab that sort of ends somewhere, but it's running through the slab. So these two share the same volumetric space. So um, when it comes to concrete, um, you, you gotta just be aware that there are settings that deal with that injector, but we'll get to that when we deal with the concrete. And then the second beam goes to the bottom of the slab. Now this is pretty common. I get this quite a lot where the slabs are only modeled to then we'll see how that impacts reinforcement and the slab actually um, let me just interrupt there quickly and the slab actually just passes straight through the third scenario is and this is also fairly common uh, is where the slab buds up against the slab uh, the beam we've got the beam full depth and we've got the slab on the other side so what we'll do is we'll model up this beam and then we will we will copy the reinforcement of this beam to the other beams and see how it affects the um, reinforcement as it arrives in the new beam. Okay, so um, also what I want to do is again just follow some form of a guide. I've got a little extract here now. I've, I've taken these from, from a project I was previously associated with. So for the layout and this little red band beam you see with Inya is very typical in Australia of how they present these, these band beam reinforcements by saying we've got six N20 eights in the bottom we and 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 it will probably carry they don't say it yeah because this is a bottom reinforcement layout but the top reinforcement will have similar or a different spec but it will be shown in the same way but this all pertains to bottom reinforcement and then what's going to happen is um it's also got ligatures so you can see there they indicate the ligatures the stirrups by saying it's a bt bt3 type and if we go to the table of the beam uh, types and we look at BT3, the engineer is asking for an open leak structure, but there's three of them. So it's three N12 leaks spaced at 500. Now, what I want to do is I want to follow this template, but not necessarily reinforcement because this is really small. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to beef those up to 16s. And then uh, we'll stick to the six N28s. I think that's good enough. But also, I won't fiddle with that because uh, we have got a beam over multiple columns. So... Um, now that we know what we're sort of aiming at, let's see what we can what we can do about this. I'll go into transparency mode, and this is our 3D render mode, so we'll leave it like that. If I flip over, I've also got a um, elevation on grid line one. If you look at the title there, it's grid line one, so there's an elevation on grid line one. And for this one, I'll also just go transparent, so we can see when we work on it. And then I'll uh, control tab again. We have another layer a, a, a view. And this one is at level 5000, which is the top of the slab. So we'll be doing most of our work in this layer. So what I'll do is I'll go on transparency mode so we can see all of this. And then secondly, what I would do is I would uh, just isolate the uh, beam because we're going to just be working with the beams in the minute. So if I go to my visibility object group and I go to CIP beam, it will then isolate the beam. And there we can see the three beams. Now, immediately we can see the effect of that. This is the one where the slab just passes straight through. So it shows you there's a cast in situ neighboring part here. Yeah? This one shows you there's something missing on the top. That's a slab that just passes over it. And this one's got two slabs butting up against it. So it's pretty much the same representation as that. So with that in mind, let's, let's just uh, start uh, putting in the uh, main reinforcement. So... For the outside ligatures, this is now this one here, which is the first one we're going to do. We will pick a 
crossing bar and uh, you can see we've got our uh, section and then for the reinforcement we'll go and pick instead of the N12s we'll pick the main 60s just to make it a little bit more visible and then for the class we'll go to our traditional uh, 5 class 5 and then for the start and end offsets I'm just going to wipe out the values there so Tekla doesn't auto calculate and for the number of reinforcing bars, I'm just going to set a target and I'm going to set a target of 200 for now. I think that for the first go will be okay. So if we click on yeah, we also don't want the top leg. So if you click this leg and then hold in shift and click that leg, that's the only one we want to deal with at the moment. So once we've got that, we can accept it and Tecla will populate the full beam for us with that reinforcement. So what I want to do now is I want to finish that off first and then use that as a template um, to, to do the other ligatures. Um, so I think the first thing we do is we just look at the spacing at the moment. So if I click on this, I can see that, um, first of all, let's just establish the direction of our, our line. Uh, there we, so this little arrow, um, as you know, uh, tells us the start of the guideline, start and end point. So this is the start point. So what I'm going to do here is at the moment it's complying, if we click on this little thing, it's complying with 34.5. Where does the 34.5 to the middle of the bar come from? Well, it comes from the, um, I'll just grab my calculator and send it to the top. It comes from the uh, cover and the bar diameter. So if we click on the concrete, we can see under concrete covers, nothing has been set. So Tecla will then revert to the settings. So if we go file settings, options, and I look at rebar sets, it will then grab its cover from this panel if there's nothing populated in here. Okay, and just remember rebar sets rely on this. The cover is determined by the concrete, not by the bar like in rebar groups. So okay, now that we know that, let's do this math. So also we need to just quickly establish the bar. So if we look at the bar, and this is just a bit of background information so you understand again how covers work and where Tecla gets its information from. If we look at the bar, it's a 16, and we know from looking at the catalog that a 16 bar has got a 19 millimeter actual diameter. So now that we know all of that, if we click on the bar again, click on the uh, guideline and then say, show me the dimensions, we've got this 34.5. So how does that work? So first of all, if we take the diameter of the bar, which is 19, and we divide that by two, we get nine and a half. And then if we add the 25 millimeter cover that Tecla is implementing, we arrive at the 34.5. And that's how Tecla, um, uh, uh, you know, calculates these values. So it's always with rebar sets, it's to the center of the bar and not to the outside fiber like it would work in, uh, in in groups. So knowing that now, what we can do is we can just quickly click on the bar and then I'm going to do a start offset of 100 millimeters. Okay, just to get it away, yeah, because we've got these big bars coming around that's got a curve up here and we don't want it to interfere with those. And then also what I'm going to do is if I, if I click away and reselect the bar just to refresh this, I can see that Tecla's got some really strange looking um, uh, spacings here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want exact spacings because this is really important. And I'm going to do 80 times 200. And if I enter that, Tecla is once again updated. But I can already see here from 18 spaces, 80 spaces, it's calculated the number of bars of 80. So it's going to miss a bar. So we can get confirmation of that by clicking on the, the guideline again. Go to modify the spacing. We can see it's now implemented the 100 millimeters we want there. And if we zoom out a little bit and just scroll up, we've got this label in red here. Now, what that means is when it's in red, it's Tecla can't fit all the bars in that we've asked for. We've asked for 80 spaces, which means it's 81 bars, but it can only fit 80 bars. And if we scroll up to the top, we can see that Tecla is actually exceeding the point. So what we can do is let's just change the spacing to one less, 79. And if we then enter, Tecla is happy with that. We can now see that we still have, um, we go down to the bottom again. We still have our 100 uh, offset yet to the center of the bar that we've asked for. And then we've got our 79 spaces. Remember, this is not bars, this is spaces. The bars are there, number of bars are 80, spaces are 79. 79 spaces at 200, 80 bars. And then if we look at the end of the beam, we have this 
this this if, uh, if you want to call it extra space this uh, this green to say hey we cool that's the spacing set by the concrete but we've got gratia now it also now so happens that if we just grab our calculator again and we just set to top make sure it doesn't disappear if we now grab the 65.5 and we add the 34.5 to it it just so happens that we have 100 millimeters which is equal to the other side although Tecla is auto calculated so if you see a funny value like that yeah although this one's been fixed that one's auto calculated this will always just tell you the cover but if you see a threshold there then you know you 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 know you can add the two together and see what you really what your distance to the center of the bar is really going to be so we've actually if we look at this now and i'll just uh, undo that and move that across there if we now look at these bars what we've managed to do is we've managed to space these bars at 200 millimeter spacing and they exactly centered about that beam which is like the perfect uh, layout now that we've got that we can go and finish off the beam because that gives us a very nice start to set out the rest of the beam, all the elements of the rest of the beam, as well as the slab reinforcement. So let's see how we do that. So if I click on this, I can then go to our end modifier. I will load my default settings for my end modifier. And then for the hook type, I will go to the 180 degree hook. And then we can just hover over the edge of the concrete there and do similar on the other side. And that pretty much takes care of our first ligature. Now, a workflow that I like to do, you could go and generate the other two, but you sometimes end up having to change them as soon as you know where the main reinforcement is going to lie. So what I do is I put the main reinforcement in first and then use that as a guide to, to, to dimension my inner leaks. So uh, let's see how that works. If I go to longitudinal, which is the opposite of the cross, um, you can then say the, uh, the engineer is asking for 28 main. We'll go to our traditional uh, class four, which is the blue bar. And then for the start and end offset, we'll just clear it. And then for the spacings, we're gonna say we need a number and the number is asking for as per the drawing was six. So now that we've got that, we can hover over the section. We can pick the bottom range only. Well, you could pick the top range if they're exactly the same, but we've got work to do on this one. We've got to split it and put hooks on it. We might as well finish that and then copy them up and that will be a more effective way of working. So if I click the bottom layer, I can then say okay. And just like that, Tecla will then place um, the bottom layer in for us within the range of that uh, first ligature. And now what I, what I find very useful is I can now use that to determine where our other leagues are going to wrap around. Now, What's really important is that if we now copy this one to change it to, to accommodate the leaks, Tecla will also push these. So we need to fix the end distances. So what we do is if we click on the bar, you'll see over here Tecla has come up with an 84 millimeter. So if we just take that and we fix it to 84, and we fix that to 84, it's going to be exactly the same result. The difference is Tecla won't move it. These bars are now fixed. They're not auto-calculated anymore. They're now fixed at that dimension. And now we've got a base to work from. So the first thing we do is if we go control P to get to the top, we go and take a measurement. And if we go F for our dimension, the dimension a measurement tool and we click from there to there, we see we've got uh, 266.4 millimeters to work with. So um, with that, uh, what we can do now is we can take this bar and we can say right click, uh, copy and if we pick an origin point you can see this is the bar and if we just put it straight back where it belongs it says you're about to copy over a bar and I said yes okay I know and I also want to keep the duplicates now what we've got and I'll interrupt that we've got two bars sitting on top of each other there and now what we can do is before we click that bar we can go to visibility switch on our leg visibility faces if we now select bar and you can see Tecla sort of uh, it's not quite sure which one you want and in this case it doesn't matter just pick one now what we can do is we can go and add that additional leg offset here. So if I click on this leg, Tecla will present us with this uh, property pane. And in here we can say as an additional, we can now log in that. So let's just make it, in this case, uh, a round number. Let's, let's just use, um, um, let's go for 270 in this case. So it's going to be a bit long, but what we'll do is we'll move the bottom bars to align with the top leggages. And then on the other side, Again, what we can do is we can go measure, control P to the top. 
on the other side, you can see how we've got that loop there now. We want an off additional offset between those two. And if I click that, it's 800 mils. So with that said, and I've just flicked uh, my views there accidentally. If I click that one now and I click on this thing, I can then put in the 800 that I've measured there. And just like that, we now have generated the um, the second ligature. And it's pretty much straight off the bat, got very nice positioning there. Now what we can do is we can click on this one again. We can hit our control C to copy it. We can pick a point. We've got our bars. We can pick the same point. Yes, we know we're copying over it. And yes, we do want to click, uh, keep the duplicates. And now just like before, we can click on any one of the two. But this time we pick this side and we say this one is going to move our previous dimension of 270 moles. And then if we click this uh, face, we can then set that to 800 moles. And if we do that, just like that, we've generated inner legs. And all we need to con do to control the actual size and the placement of them is to work with our faces. And our faces is still the extremity of the beam. It just makes it easy to position those rather than trying to go and draw legs in the middle of you and the face is going to be in the center of the bar and you're not really going to know how to work with offsets. It just makes it very hard. Now, if I say Control P to get to the top, I'll just do a redraw there quickly. Because we put these in and it remembered the setting of that, we still have the 79 at 200 and we still have the 100. So it's exactly in line with that. Now, what we can do is we can move these bars um, either to that side or this side. So it doesn't really matter which side we pick. Um, so what we can do is to get this bar to sit exactly on that side, we need one bar diameter. So if we take the... Um, uh, 100 millimeters and we make that 119 for instance and I say enter you can see how Tecla perfectly moves that in so it's, it doesn't clash and now while we've got that selected we hit our painter and we click our next our next uh, ligature this one uh, sometimes when you can't click like in the case where it didn't work for me just interrupt and switch off the leg faces because that sometimes makes it hard to select stuff. So if I select this one, I can go to Painter and then I can hover over this one and say Modify. And it will adapt the settings that we had for the previous one. Control P again. And just like that, we can see we've got a beautiful arrangement of inner legs now. Now, just for the sake of the um, visual, I'm going to take those two and change the class to six. So it just uh, it's a bit more visual of what we're doing there. Right. So far, so good. So what we're going to do now, now that we've got that, um, what we want to do now is just break the main bars up quickly. So I think the first thing we're going to do with this main bar is let's stick a hook on the back here. So what we can do is click on the bar, go to End Modifier, End Detail, and let's load our standard. It's a 90 degree hook, everything is okay. And then if you hover over that, we will then add a end modifier, as you can see there to that beam. We might as well do the same on the other side. If we come to this side, we can then say end detail, hover over this edge, and we've got our end uh, our hook on that side. Now let's look at breaking this up. Now for the bottom reinforcement, they normally splice over the um, over the columns in the mid, mid uh, you know, uh, in the middle of the columns, over the supports. So if I click on that, I can then say, give me a splitter. And let's just reset all the values by loading our defaults. And then what we can say is we can say our splitter type's got to be a crank, a big bar. So let's just crank them. And then uh, let's just leave it and see where we get to. So if I take this and I just hover, you can see Tecla, um, you know, you can pick a point where you want to, it's probably more visible if you do this. You can just pick a point where you want that. Um, so sometimes when you hover over these, you can't really select the grid. So just pick up a, a, a spot. It's, it's, it's not important. Just pick a spot. And then what we can do is if we click on this uh, splitter line now, we can make sure that on this contextual toolbar, this little one here has got a few options. Make sure that we are on move to perpendicular direction. And then once you drag that, it will always then drag in that plane. And then it's easy to hit your grid line exactly. Now let's see what's happened. If I just re re uh, move over like this a bit, we can see what's happened here. It's generated a crank. And if you look at the direction of the crank, uh, of the of, of the um, area, 
you can see the arrow there it's put it on the left hand side and if we go to our table we can actually see we do have left yeah but i would like to change that i would like to put this on the right hand side and the reason for that is that if you look at this end bar we've got a hook on it plus we have a crank where this bar is going to end up just having being a straight bar so what i'm going to do is i'm going to flick that around so what i'm going to say i'm going to click on the splitter and say place me on the right hand side i can either do that or i can flip the direction but let's just go right so it doesn't confuse anybody so that will put it on the right hand side and now what we want to do is we want to center it about that uh, about that splitter line because we want this to be right on top of our column so what we can do is if we hover over and we look at this the crank length is 1200 what we can do on the split offset we can just pull it back by adding half of that lap and once we do that we can see we've got our crank then nicely positioned center over our grid line which is where our column is and the end bar ends up being a normal l bar which is great for scheduling it's great for fabrication it's easy so now that we have that what we can do is go control p zoom in here click on the bar grab the splitter and say control c to copy it make sure that when you copy it that your property paint says a rebar splitter selected one so you don't have other objects and then what we can do is pick the origin we can pick this grid and then what we can do is we can just go and place it at all the other grids so we want to split there we also want to split on that grid and we also want to split that that grid now now that we've got all the splitters done down the bottom let's just go and see what we've got so if we look at that the first column is there the second column splits there and i know this looks a bit funny because this grid line's actually at the top of the beam as you can see so don't stare too much at that and then if we go we've also got one there and then lastly we've got the situation again where we've got the l with the crank now it's 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 preferred to unless you're doing columns it's preferred to rather have a double jockle in other words you're gonna you can have a crank on this side and a crank on that side of the bar than have an l bar with a crank so if we click on this and we click on the splitter again yeah we can just reverse it to the left back to the left and say modify so what we end up with now is we've got an elbow on this side which matches the one on the other side exactly so it's going to be one line on the bending schedule and then this last bar is going to end up with a double joggle or a double j or a double cranked bar at the end which is an easy bar to fabricate so that is the ideal situation with those now we've pretty much got that beam done um, but i want to add a few extras and the few extras is we might have a situation where we uh, want to add um, additional reinforcement or the engineer wants to add additional reinforcement down the bottom and maybe what he's wanting is he's saying okay over the mid spans in other words these big spans we have yeah can i please have five additional n28s in the middle of all these bars okay so how do we do that again we go to longitudinal and we head over to our tab and we make sure that we select the 2080 ones and we will pick a purple a seven for a change and then for the offset um uh we can work one out uh but let's just let's just pick a value and i'll show you how we work out a more precise value and i'll just say 150 for now and exact spacings no we want number of and the number of we want is five so they can cover all the voids in between and now what we can do is we can just hover make sure we only pick that part and say okay now what that's going to do is it's going to give us one massive long bar all along the end of the of the um uh beam so what we can do is if we click on that switch on our leg visibility go into control p so we can see it from the top the first thing we can do then is if we click on that bar we pick on the bar we can um hover over the edge of the face and then we can drag this end up to the uh grid line and we can drag this end up to this grid line now we know that that bar only spans this full space but it's also asked for that bar in the mid span to be two and a half meters long so if we click on that value make sure we shrink from both ends select all of the value and type in 2500 enter we then get bars in mid span exactly two and a half meters long and at the moment we just need to look at the spacing okay so now with the spacing if i can just look at it from here these are the little purple bars with the spacing we really need to hit the middle there so the way i do it is if i look at this bar we know we've got 84 moles there and if we take a dimension from there 
to there, we've got that. And if I take a dimension from there to there, it will be the 84 mole. So what we can do is, if I bring our calculator across again, just plug it, um, we can say we need 266.4 divided by 2 to get the half span. And to that, we want to add the 84 moles. So if we do that, we've got 217 moles. So let's just work with no around numbers. And uh, I'll just move this out of the way again. Uh, let's just plug in uh, 215. So if I click on that and I go here and I say 215 moles, and I do 215 moles, enter. We can see we then land pretty much center on there, center on there, and these just balance out in the middle. There is one thing though, if we go, if we go and look at where this bar ended up, if we look at this, Tecla has put it in the third layer for us because it's detected there's already, already a bar in the second layer. So if we click on that bar, and you can see that from the, um, the uh, uh, layer number here, if we click on the layer, or the face number, and we can uh, overwrite the three with the two and say enter, it will then drop that bar into the second layer for us. And just like that, we now have our additional bars in between the other bars also in the second set. Now that we've got that, it's as easy as grab that bar and say control C to copy it and we'll copy it from this grid line. Oops, this grid line to this grid line and then also to this grid line. And that's it. So now we have all our additional bars mid span populated in our beam, and we've just got to make sure it should uh, respect the two, the layer two, and it does in all cases. So that pretty much deals with um, the additional reinforcement and uh, how we can tweak it uh, to get it precise. Now, before we move on to the, um, to the rest, um, I will head over to the elevation, which is this one. And for us to be able to copy these uh, these bars to the top, we need um, this view to have its XY plane. So you can see at the moment we're in an XZ plane. And if we look at our our um, user, user um, coordinate system, it's still there. So the way we do that is you can go to uh, view and under your work plane, you can say parallel to the view plane and then just click in the view and have a look at what happens here. If you click in the view, it will then change your plane to an X, a Y plane. And now you can use, and you can also see how our coordinate system has changed here. Um, now what we can do is we can copy these uh, mirror to the top. So if I click on that, what I can do is I can right click, copy, mirror, and then we need to select the halfway mark. Now, here's a bit of a trick here. If we select this edge, you can see this X, there, there's the midway, but it's it's only this face. What we need is the midway in the full depth. Now, there's a few things you can do here. Um, the one is if you just go and you just keep on scrolling closer to the bar, you can see that it picks up the bar's face. I don't know if you can see that. It picks up the bar's face and you can use that. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it, we know that this beam has got an 850 millimeter depth. So what we can do is we can hold in our control key, click that bottom point, move our cursor up and then type in 425, which is half of 850. And if we click enter, you can see there's a red little line there. Tecla regards that as a temporary snap. So that becomes our first snapping point. And now we can just pick the horizontal axis and say copy and that will copy it into the top layer for us. Now, Tickless put that bar in exactly the same plane as this bar, why? Because there's no distribution still running inside the beam, so it's, it thinks it's okay to put it in there. So all we need to do to deal with that is, we know that this is a 16 a N16 bar, which has a diameter of 19. We can click on that bar, click on the face and just say, we need an additional offset of 19 millimeters there, please. And as soon as we do that, we have the perfect arrangement in the top. Now, just to give this context, and obviously, um, you know, uh, you, you wouldn't necessarily splice on the column in this case, you would uh, move these splices in, but again, you can just grab this, grab the splicing line and then move it wherever the engineer wants it. But I think um, that is simple enough to do, so I'm not going to waste time on that. What I'm going to do is I want to just quickly show how does the uh, um, reinforcement in the slab influence uh, this or how we can deal with that. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm also just going to use a reinforcement in the bottom layer because we're dealing with slabs in a different chapter. Uh, so if I go control P and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my slabs back, beams and slabs, control P. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put uh, a reinforcement running in this direction to show how it interacts with this because the reinforcement that runs in this direction doesn't actually go through the beam. It goes from this edge to that edge and it starts here again and it goes to that. So it doesn't have an influence on the beam. So let's just do reinforcement in the, if you want to call it horizontal direction. But while I'm here, I can see that our UCS is still set to, um, you know, the view. So what we can do is just work plane and, uh, sorry, not yeah, work plane and then say parallel to the XY plane and we say change and that fixes it up. So it's back in the global plane again. If we go to Reborn and we go to this time select by face, which face face really works well with slabs. Um, in beams and columns, I tend to use all the others, but if for slabs, by face and by guidelines is um, a really a good option. Now, before we get uh, stuck in there, let's change the Reborn. So we go to our catalog and this time we say we're selecting 16s and we want them to be a class two, which is red. And for now, let's just wipe out the Offset, so technically there's an auto calc based on cover, and in here we're just going to target a 200 millimeter spacing, so that ties in with the uh, beam. So once we've got that, we can then concentrate on the contextual toolbar. And firstly, is we want to uh, create bars on the uh, far face. We also the direction. If you're not sure about the direction, don't worry too much about it right now. And then the lastly, what we want to do is we want to select, um, say for instance, the whole face. Um, and then if we hover over, you can see how Tecla picks up the face. It also, if you look at those little cyan lines, it depends on which side you're closer to, how it's going to change. You can also force it, but that is good for us. We want that direction. And then if I just turn slightly, the near far, far face is picked up by how you view. Now we, we're looking at this from the top. So the far face would be on the other side. So if we change this, to a near face and we hover over that we can see the polygon where the rebar is going to be inserted we want it down the bottom so if i then hover over that again we've got to just make sure that we've got the right uh, close uh, the right orientation and once i do that i can click and tecla then populates the uh, bars for us now before we split those bars up to make sense what we can do is again just come up here and we can say these bars should be the same spacing as those bars and we should know that from previous. So what to do is by exact spacing and the first thing we do is we can say 79 times 200. That will give us 80 bars. And then for the offset. So at the moment, again, this is that 25 plus half the bar diameter. We want this to hug that one and we know this one is at 100. So if we take 100 and we less than 90, uh, 100, yeah, less 90, we get 81. So if we change the start, and first of all, let's just check the orientation. So if we look at this line, it is orientated, and sometimes you just need to rotate it to see it. Yep, the start is on the bottom end, control P. So if we change the spacing now, come on. If we click on this bar, and we want this bar to hug this one on the bottom, we can say 100 less 19 which is 81 and if we plug 81 in there we get exactly the result we want so those are really well positioned and these bars will pretty much carry all the way through correctly because we are using the same spacing as before and you can see how well that works out now obviously in a situation like that the guys are going to struggle to feed this through so we need to split this bar so what we can do here is we can just split it everywhere um, Sometimes my my uh, computer just refuses to to uh, to pan. Uh, quite interesting, but anyway, it does. It's not going to stop us. We can click on this bar and say switch off the leg visibility. We don't need it anymore. And go to the splitter and load our defaults for our splitter. And then what we can do is we can go Control P from the top, and we can just go over here and just pick. And make sure that you are in a, a, a single pick mode. And we can just pick, I mean, uh, your chances of, of getting that uh, grid line exactly is, is very slim. So just pick a point. You can always uh, move that later. And then in here, we're probably going to need one in the middle of this beam too. And I'll just click there somewhere. And we're going to 
well, we don't have reinforcement there, so we don't worry about it. And then we're probably going to need some one in mid Spain yeah, somewhere, you know, so just there somewhere. Okay, now that we have that, we can move them quickly. So I'll start with this one. I can pick, pick this leader. Again, look at your your uh, movement here. So we want perpendicular. And once I grab that, I can then move it exactly onto our grid. And this one can be moved exactly onto the midpoint of that slab. So it's midway between that end and that end. And then lastly, we can move this one onto the uh, uh, grid again. Now with that, we can see how well that's worked out for us or not. Yeah, we've got a clash, but yeah, we don't. So all we need to do is to resolve that is to, well, we can actually just swap these two around and that will work very, very well. So if we take this one and this one and we change them to 81, and we take this one and we change this one to 119. There we go. Now, just by swapping those two around, we have now got this situation where we have absolutely no clashes. I mean, look how, how good that works. And that will be repeated through there because we're going to copy the beams through there. So what we could do, because this is a separate slab, uh, well, it's a separate two slabs, what we could do is just quickly go face and then pick this one populate that one and then also um, then take this one because we want to switch on the faces and just pull it through so if we take this point we can then drag that all the way there and then once we've got that we can just add a splitter in the middle of this beam quickly just there somewhere and then grab the splitter and move it to the now we've pretty much replicated what the others, others has got and we've also repeated the spacing because the setting was skipped. Now that we have that, we've got the bottom reinforcement running all the way through. And uh, what we can also do is just grab this set and also uh, grab that set. And then what we can do is say right click copy special linear and then copy it from this point to that point and make sure that we're only going in the Z and say copy. That's a... Um, produced a top layer for us oops top layer for us and if we now look at this beam we still don't have any problems with clashes those those bars are just you know working out very nicely there for us okay so with that what we can do now is we can replicate the reinforcement in the other beams because we've pretty much got that beam covered now so what we can do is a quick way of doing it that I always do is um, if you hold in your alternate key and you click on the concrete and at the moment um, it's not. Uh, oh, there it does. If you click on the concrete, it will highlight the concrete and its assembly. So in other words, it's, it's all the parts belonging or attached to it. And uh, then what we can do is hold in the control key and then click the concrete. So what I've done now is I've just deselected the concrete. And if we look at our property pane, we've got eight uh, uh, rebar sets selected. And now with that, now that we know, we know we've only got rebar selected, we can right click and say copy special to another object. And the object down the bottom, it says pick the source. The source is this concrete. And now it's asking for the destination. Now all we have to do is, let's go to the furthest one first because it's similar to the first one. If we click there, Tecla just transfers all of that reinforcement as it as is in there. And if we now go to the middle one, where we know we've only got a half, uh, a, half a, a beam, if we click on that one, Tecla adapts to the height automatically, which is in a way great because that means we can copy bars from different, uh, con uh, you know, to different concrete sizes and Tecla will just be smart enough to deal with it. But in this case, it's not what we want. But this is the way we got it from the architect uh, in the way it was maybe uh, modeled in a different system. So we need to deal and learn to deal with this. So the way I do with that is if we go to the elevation again, and we're there, we can see the effect of what we've got. If we now turn on our visibility or make sure that it's turned on, we can then go and select the bars we want to change, which is this bar. It's the top one. It's this one. And it's this one. Those are the only ones affected by this. And now you can see all the grips are lined there in that plane now. Now what we can do is hold in your alternate key, select over those grips, and then say move linear and move from this point up to this point. Now make sure that you in the Z that you only have a value in the Z. And once we say move, it fixes up all of those values for us. And we have now 
exactly the same result as with the others, although the beam, the concrete was modeled differently. There is a caveat though, and I'm going to show it in a minute. If we look at, let's just go back to our top slab, or we can even go to our 3D slab where we have more information. If we look at this and we flick over to our uh, select assembly um, selection, if we click on this beam, it selects all the reinforcement. If we select this beam, it selects all the reinforcement. However, if we select this beam, our top reinforcement is not part of the deal. So why is that? We can also see if we go back to um, select components, if we click on, on this beam and we say right click inquire cast unit and we look at the report, we can see we're dealing with 2.42 tons of reinforcement. And as we can see there, we've got a very small bending schedule. It's very optimized, very good scheduling. If we go to the opposite side one, which was the same originally, we click on this one, right click inquire cast unit. We have the same amount of reinforcement, but yet when we go to this one and we say right click inquire cast unit, we're getting a reduced tonnage. And that's because of that top bar that's not part of this. Now, the way that Tekla works and, and, and the engine works is it's trying to optimize by saying this part, the, 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 the center of gravity of this part does not actually fall within the beam. It falls within the slab. So the chances that that should belong to a slab is very good. Now, you can think of a situation where you're pouring pad footings with with um, starter bars coming out of it. Those starter bars, you might be scheduling with a column, but Tekla is going to put it in the in the pad footing for you uh, because that's where the gravity point is going to fall. The footing is also the one that's the lower Z value if it does share two elements, like in a starter bar, it will share a pad footing, it will also share a column. So which one gets it? The one with the lower Z value. Okay, so in that case, um, it's going to try and schedule when you're producing bending, bending schedules, it's going to schedule this bar with the slab and not with the beam. Now, in certain in certain situations, that is correct. Although it's a beam beam bar, it will be uh, shipped with, uh, you know, trucked to the site with, with a slab because the guys that fix this on site, they'll put in all the bottom reinforcement, all the ligatures, and then the guys that come and do the slab will put in the slab They'll close up the top of the beam as part of the slab exercise and not the beam exercise. So that could work. But in the case where you don't want that, there is a workaround. And what I'm going to do here is if you click on this, okay, and you right click, there's an option there, attach to part. And if you then say attach to part, you click on this beam. Tickler's now associated that part back to this beam. And we now go to our uh, select assemblies and click on the beam, you can now see that that part indeed is, or that bar indeed is now part of that beam. And if we go back to our component selector, we select the beam, right click, inquire, cast unit, we now have the correct tonnage again. So this is just a bit of a side note to say, if you get into a problem like that, say, oh, my rebar sets are broken up. They're not in the concrete where it belongs. To. This is how these things work. So it's 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 very well worth to go to the TUA, the Tecla User Assistance website, and look up how Tecla deals with center of gravity of bars and which element, concrete element, owns that bar and how you can change it. Now, I hope you enjoyed this. This is this is a pretty, uh, you know, uh, a simple uh, beam. Um, transfer beams can get very, very complicated. And I've also had situations where people have asked me for, um, uh, uh, you know, multiple layers of bars. And maybe just before we go, let's just do that quickly. So in a case where, you know, they want to stack bars on top of these, um, even though we've got, you know, uh, um, uh, cranks in here. The way we could typically do it is if we go to uh, which one is it? Let's do the uh, uh, let's do the longitudinal bar first. So longitudinal bars is the ones. Actually, that's not going to work. Let's do the crossing bars first. If we click crossing, yeah, the bar we want to do is this one. So this is going to be the spacer bar, and let's just pick the same size because we at least want to go over, over the crank. So we'll pick 28, and let's make them a different color so we can actually see them better so i'll make them nine 
and then for the start and end offset i'm going to pick you know we want to be somewhere in the middle yeah so i'll say a thousand because i think that overhang is a two thousand so we'll just go a thousand and a thousand and then for the spacing i'm just going to pick a number and let's just make the number eight bars for instance let's just see what we get and if i then say okay you can see how Tekla then produces and then Maybe just for the sake of uh, simplicity, let's pick those two and let me put my visibility, leg visibility off. Let's pick that bar and let's pick this bar and let's pick the concrete and go right click show only selection. So now we're getting these spacer bars. Now, obviously, you can go, you know, put it in plan and go and drag them wherever you want them. But at the moment, they they sort of are right there. And now what we can do is we can go to uh, give us longitudinal bars. And what the engineer wants, he wants another row of it. So it's 28. Uh, let's just pick a, another color. We can say brown at, uh, at this time. And we can say that the offset, now remember the offset from the previous thing, I think was 84 millimeters, if I remember correctly. 84 millimeters and then the distribution will be number and the number of will be six so now we're pretty much going to match these guys yeah and now if we hover over our section pick our bottom we can then say okay and just like that tickler has now picked up that there is another spacer bar it's in a different um, layer now remember the crank is not a layer the cranks majority of the crank the big the big portion of the crank is this and that determines the layer this is a lap so this one will be in the second layer, so or the third layer rather, and this will be a fourth layer bar. So if I click on that bar, and um, you know we uh, put on our leg visibility and we look for our little, you can see the layer four, and that's how you can easily quickly stack up layers. And now obviously it's too long. If we click the bar, we can just hover over the side and say change from both sides and just make that 15 meters. That will pull it back a bit and now what you can do is you can go and split them up just like we did before with those and you don't really need to do crank here you can just do lapping bar side by side and that's how you sort of quickly build up uh you know um a group or, or, or bundled bars if you want to call it that so it's it's very it's very simple um you know um I think uh, rebar sets for this application of uh, detailing complex um band beams is is very good and i know this is manual um there's obviously as a last note there's a lot of components in here that deal with similar things as components but note that they are uh, pretty much rebar sets and single bars and they deal differently and they might have restrictions where your application like especially if you've got multiple inner beams doing it manually really teaches you how tecla works and things and sometimes when you quick you can get this done very very quickly as you can see they were pretty much very quickly populated three beams even if this one was different it's easy to click and to change properties and things will just work well i hope you enjoyed it see you in the next video